X-ray crystallography uh, is a technique that um, it would take a long time to explain in detail, but I think it's enough to say that it was a very new technique. Um, and that's one of the ways in which Dorothy was lucky. I think luck plays a part in all very successful careers. Uh, and she was lucky because she got in right on the ground floor. Um, so this is a technique that enables you to find the three-dimensional structures of molecules. Uh, so you know exactly where all the atoms are in the molecule. And understanding how something is put together helps you to understand how it works. And that's obviously particularly important uh, if you're looking at the molecules of which we are made, the, the things that make up uh, living bodies and, and drugs and, and diseases and all, all the things that we have an interest in for, for medical reasons. Um, and it was when she was doing her PhD in Cambridge that she began to work on that kind of molecule. Uh, particularly, um, she, she was with her supervisor, J.D. Bernal, uh, she took the first X-ray photographs of a protein, and it was pepsin, the digestive enzyme pepsin. And up until that point, uh, nobody had really understood what proteins were like. Proteins are the most important molecules in our bodies. They're mostly what we're made of. They do all the different jobs around the body. Um, and so knowing what their structure was was going to be very important. And some chemists didn't even think it had a structure. It, they thought it was some kind of floppy thing that you'd never be able to, to work out a crystal structure of it. Um, and so by showing that uh, an X-ray, firing an X-ray beam through a crystal of, of pepsin did give uh, a pattern of diffracted spots uh, showed for the first time that proteins did have a three-dimensional structure. So she, she really kind of shot to fame at that point because her name was on that paper. Uh, and so she, she is, her name is forever associated with the very origin of protein crystallography. Um, and she then took on her own protein to study, which was insulin, the, the molecule we've all heard of because it's what you need to, to treat diabetes. Um, she wasn't able to solve it quickly. In fact, it took her 35 years. She started working on it in the mid-30s, finally solved it in 1969. Um, but she was very much uh, at the forefront of research in protein crystallography that was going on. And there were very few uh, molecules that were solved before she managed to solve insulin. But in the meantime, uh, she took opportunities that came her way to work on molecules that were also very important, but much smaller and so much easier to, to solve with the uh, relatively rudimentary techniques she had at her disposal. And the first of those was penicillin, uh, which was a massively important drug. Its importance was discovered in the early years of World, World War II. Uh, but again, its structure wasn't known, and she was able to solve its structure using X-ray crystallography, uh, which led to the development of a number of other synthetic antibiotics. Um, clearly an enormously important step forward. Uh, and then subsequently she, she worked on vitamin B12, substantially bigger than penicillin, but not nearly as big as a protein. Um, and this is a, a, a vitamin that we all need to avoid, something called pernicious anemia. Uh, and, and that was a molecule that, as well as being medically important, was chemically rather interesting uh, in the way the atoms of which it's made uh, are connected to one another and that the, the chemists of the world really had no idea what the structure of this molecule was and how it was put together. And again, she was able to solve that with X-ray crystallography. Uh, and that result um, was described by uh, W.L. Bragg, who was one of the discoverers of the technique of X-ray crystallography, as breaking the sound barrier in, in, in the field. It, was, it happened about the same time that the sound barrier was broken in flight. So it was a very sort of contemporary reference. Um, so it was those two things, penicillin and vitamin B12, that she was awarded the Nobel Prize. But she subsequently went on to solve that very first problem that she tackled on her own, the structure of insulin.